Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Handy Mandy TV. And today we're going to make a jewelry display case out of an old picture frame. Um, if any of you guys have watched the last episode, which was, you know, the first one for 2013, um, I was explaining how I'm trying to get more organized and also that any future projects are actually going to be on exclusive content on the website. And I'm still using trial and error, but I'm finding that there's more input from people on Facebook and I just started a Google Plus page so I still have to add that in but um, if you guys want to find out because I've already uploaded those pictures of my finds onto Facebook like over a week ago so that you guys could see what I was finding coming up with that you guys will see now so this is what I've been using thus far as a jewelry display case my stepmom gave this to me it was a nice little box it was technically a sewing box and so there's this, there's this tier, and I'm, I used it for all like my jewelry and, but the thing too is there's two different kinds of kind of jewelry cases as it were. There's a set box or, you know, container and everything has to be fit inside. Or there's a display and you fit everything on the outside and it's not constrained as it were to one specific size of whatever container is that holding it. So I'm reversing it and I'm going to be making a display case for myself as well as my mom. So this is my frame and this is like, uh, it's got gold uh, on here. It's mostly brown with flecks of red and I've already marked where all the knobs are going to go. So as we progress you'll see my mom's frame which is like twice the size as mine. Um, and so the knobs, so I went to Bible's Permissions and I got that, and the picture frames that they had were, like, these are hardwood. The ones they had out in the room, where, like, the store is, were, there was one that was really nice, but it was, like, plastic, creamy gold, very plain, not very carved as these ones are, and it came with a picture and glass and everything, and it was 12 bucks. Laura, who is an absolute sweetheart, God bless her, she brought me to the back, the warehouse, in behind, and um, she helped me find two picture frames, and she sold them to me for two dollars each. So that's ten bucks off. So, and she also brought me in the back to find doorknobs that I could use. So, uh, she gave me about a dozen for a dollar. So they look like these. So I've got about three, two and three of each and whatnot, so they're all kind of mixed match. And then these ones are the one I'm using for mine, which are just square wood ones, but I'm repainting mine. So I'm going to show you how to do as is, which is what I'm doing for my mom, and completely restyling and repainting as I'm doing for mine. So with that, um, I have acrylic paints that I got at the dollar store, and I'm going to be using this for other projects as well in the future, so that's why I got the tabs. Otherwise, if you have like those little boxes of the little tubes of acrylic paint, acrylic paint goes really long, so you won't need that much. I mean, I painted this massive window that is like from like the floor to the ceiling and equally across, and it was just massive, and I only had to use like one bottle of each. So uh, I'm going to be using acrylic paints for mine to recolor the um, the knobs, the picture frame, and I also, so these are going to be for the necklaces and bracelets, and these little hooks that are at the dollar store, so I'm using three of mine, three of my mom's, and I'm going to repaint them, and um, they are just a dollar for a six pack, so I'm going to be repainting it, and um, because of the wallpaper, what I'm thinking of doing is using a sponge, and these is a this is a ten pack of the you know the, the cleaning sponges and one side is really hard so I'll be able to scratch it and give it like an aged look and the other side I'll be able to like if I want I can like chop it up but it's like give it the um, the sponge texture kind of painted look instead of using a brush where you see the the strokes so um, that's why I'm painting it and I've also got a cloth here because I'm gonna experiment and see what works because it's carved but the only part that I want, because I'm doing silver instead of gold, is the, um, like the top, 
the very top of what's carved. So what I'm thinking, I'm going to experiment and see if this is like an old sock. And if you don't have like a matching one or if it's old or if it's got holes, you can clean it and turn it into like a rag, which is what I've done here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the silver paint on here and just brush it really fast just so I can get the top. And then if I need to, I can scratch it to make it look aged. So I have a paint palette here, my sponge, a cloth. Um, I have Q-tips if need be to clean it because they can be old, which is why I also have a toothbrush just to clean it out first before I paint. And I marked it using, you know, uh, measuring tape and or ruler and a marker. And uh, let's see. So with the frame and actually constructing it, you are going to need, this is hardware cloth. And it's essentially, it's this grid-like pattern. It's a grid of metal wire. And instead of like chicken coop where it's just big hexagons and they're not as... Um, strong. These are thick wires, so my handy brother is going to be helping me, so you guys will get to meet him, and he's going to be drilling the holes for all the doorknobs and the hooks and um, helping me to staple this hardware cloth into the frames. And so the frames are going to have this metal wire so that you can hang all like your earrings on it. And so what you'll need, this is just like a little leftover piece. I went to Home Hardware where I got this for $7.99, and I got... This is a 1 8 inch board. I can't remember what it's called, but they, they can cut it for you. And it was like the smallest one, so it was like 250 And they cut it into the sizes that I need so that in the back of the frame, as you'll see, I'll direct you on what measurement sections you should do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have these wallpaper samples that I got for free, which is amazing because there's like at least a couple meters in here. And I'm going to wrap those around the board and put it in behind the mesh so that you won't have to see like the wall. There'll be like a backing to it. Kind of like a picture, but I'm using wallpaper. So let's get started. So this is my brother Stevie, the resident handyman who is going to now take over and we will tell you what you need along the way and he will give you directions on what to do. Stevie, take it away. Alright, so what we're going to be doing here is in this frame, my sister here has, don't know if you can see at the moment, in the small corner has marked with a small black pen specific spots she would like pre-drilled. As for the pre-drilling, it will actually be uh, for the screws to actually hold the uh, little uh, knobs or door handles or whatever you'd like to call them. Knobs. Well, according to her, it's knobs. So we're going to unscrew them. We're going to get the size of the drill bit that we're going to need to drill the holes. We're going to hook her up and uh, start the pre-drill. So first up, we're going to place everything so he knows where to drill what because they're different sizes for the knobs versus the hooks. All right, so I have chosen two bits here, as you can see. Now, one's a little bit bigger, one's a little bit smaller. Now, the smaller is designed for these little hooks. As you can see, so as you can see, there's a little point. means it's actually going to be uh, aiming to drill into uh, the frame. And you got to have the thread grabbing. So the thread being the little bits around. Now, what I've done is I've chosen a specific bit just a little bit smaller than the threads, so it allows the threads to grab. And the other bit, so you can tell it's a little bit bigger, because this has a flat tip, it's not designed to grab the wood, it's designed just to go through and grab whatever's on the other side. As it will be sandwiched, or uh, doing a sandwich together and holding it there to uh, clamp on. So, I have a question. Because the screw is very long and the wood isn't that thick, will you have to cut the or the screw down? Alright. So since the screw will go into the handle, I don't think it'll have too much of a problem with the uh, thickness of the wood. 
It's, uh, it's fairly thick. It's about this much on the other side. So I'm going to start with a drill. I'm going to go bigger, drill all of them first, and then I'm going to go around and drill with the small one. So let's get this in. Get the drill on drill mode. You don't need hammer drill unless you're actually drilling something like a screw into a board. So this way, we'll just stick to this. Are you screwing it, drilling it right into the this? Oh, well, I can, uh, like, I'm not going to drill right into this. I'm going to drill enough, and I'm going to lift it so I penetrate. Okay. So you don't want to start off too fast since there is Whoa. the material. So you're going to go right on the dot that you marked, or my sister marked one way or another, is the black little dot. Huh. One thing I forgot to mention. If you see a uh, focus point, a little thicker head, don't use it. Wrong bit. This one's uh, for cement. So you're going to want a completely straight bit. Or pointy. My bad. And if you ever notice while uh, drilling, the summit looks like this. Don't use it. It's completely bent. So we, uh, it'll be a tight fit, but at least this one's uh, flat at the end, so you don't have to worry. That's uh, just a regular bit. Every other. Get this end. And just repeat for all the different screws. Okay, so here's my frame, and of course, I had to fix this because this large one, the hole is much deeper, so it can't be right here. I had to move it up right here, so I'm hoping my brother will be able to drill through this because otherwise, it's not going to fit. I want it to fit like this. So, um, I have the hooks already on here because that's easy enough. I'm going to color these individually and make sure to get in behind so that you can't see this natural color once it's all finished. So I have all my little doorknobs. I have all my stuff that I'm going to need. now. Hardware cloth is going to be stapled right into this side. Right, it's gonna, the hardware cloth is going to be stapled into that side. So I want a board to go over like this, so that we can make a shadow box. And when you go to hook your earrings onto the hardware cloth, you'll have some room, and you won't be scraping the wallpaper that's going to be on this board. So here's the frame, and here's the board. Now. When I asked for the measurements, they took the wrong ones. They took the measurements for the inside, not the outside. So I'm using one of the other boards that happen to be larger. And because you don't want it on the inside. So if you do end up calling it smaller, what you can do is put um, something right across the corner that's not going to be seen from the front that's just going right across so you can put it over top but it has to be thin now obviously my fingers are thin so it'd be like a small piece of wood that'd be going across so you can still get that shadow box effect my other piece happened to go right across so I'm going to use this one instead for the smaller frame and I'll be fixing it for the other one so you guys will see that and now we're just going to wrap it like a Christmas present and I have my scissors I'm going to mark four corners. So, it's going to end up like that. 
So you're going to do that to all four corners. And you're going to use tape to secure it. No, no, I want you to notice too that I cut one eighth of an inch up to the outside corner when I was cutting it just to make sure that I wasn't going to have some kind of little void there where you can see the corner. Not that you can see it anyways because it's in the back, but just a nice real thumb. Now you can't tell from the front. You can't see the uh, corners, which is good. Take some newspaper and write it down so you don't get your surface, your tape or whatever you need, wet with paint. So now I have peacock blue, African violet. I have black, white, gold and silver and I made sure that this gold was more of a cream gold that matched real gold because sometimes the fake gold can be really yellow so I've already used that in a previous painting and it's called uh, Divine Fingerprint and it was when I was painting with bubbles so I'll put the link below for that one now as I'm using two of each the bigger ones are going to be darker because you know there's not obviously a lot of bright colors when you're looking at like the stars um, there's a lot of dark colors and just little bits of vibrant because of light. So I'm just going to darken these up a little.
So Stevie has this hardware cloth now and he's cutting it to extend beyond the size of this inner part of the frame that he's going to be fitting it into. One other thing you want to realize is when you're cutting and you're going to be cutting this uh, full length, sometimes it's annoying if you have to release the uh, clamps. So what I did was I got a little technique going where the two bottom fingers and the thumb and use the upper fingers and the uh, third finger to move it in and out. So your thumb kind of holds it. So when you're cutting, you can at least do it a little bit quicker. Now as you might notice, these staples right here are a little bit on the long side, so we'll probably have to use a hammer to pound them in the rest of the way. But I but, see that they are sharp on the end, so they are going to drive right into the wood, which is exactly yeah. what you want. So if you use shorter staples. staples, then you won't have to worry about hammering it in, but we are going to staple it in because the way we're putting it in, you're not going to see the staples and it's not going to be showing out the side. All right, one thing to remember though is when you're uh, doing the corners, see if I can get this uh, shown for you. Is since you're bending it at a 90 degree angle upwards and same with this side, one of the easiest ways is just cut out the uh, outside corner so they don't conflict with each other. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Lovely mess. Uh, good thing we're in the garage. We can clean up later. And always make sure to clean your workstation because you don't want to leave a mess and have to trip over anything or walk over it and you just it's more organized. What I'm going to do is try to line this up. So it's straight. Straight as possible. Put this down. Be very careful. They are sharp. So if you can, wear gloves. Especially if it's cold out. Like I... It's cold. <gasps> I know. <laughs> And we had the garage door open, so I mean. I'm gonna go over it a second time to make sure you get it at more of a 90 degrees. Is it snapping? No, some of the. Oh, that was part of, of it coming some off. Some of the edge is already coming off, so you don't have to worry about that too much. That's why you cut an excess. This, uh, That's how you're stapling it in, right into the frame. Not onto this. No, but right here not is Not onto the, this front part, but the inside. Yeah. Hey everyone, look at the finished product! Isn't it amazing? I am so excited to put this in my room and start hanging my jewelry and just... And it looks fabulous and professional, I have to say. Um, special thanks go out to my brother, Stevie Wonder Care Bear, who's very helpful and amazing on this project because he did a lot of the construction work because me and my dainty little fingers. Um, so the additional items that you're going to need from the tool shed or your garage or wherever you're working um, is going to be something to cut your wood because what ends up happening is say you get your picture frame and you want to use the original backing which is how it kind of worked out for this one because the piece ended up being cut to the inside instead of the outside so you guys will see the explanation when I show you other clips in this movie. Uh, so what ended up happening is we ended up taking some extra board and cutting off the triangle parts and putting them right here so that and painting them 
so that um, they would stand and still be a shadow box. Now I spray painted, I covered with uh, painter's tape all around the edge and the newspaper so that I could spray paint this um, hardware cloth so that you couldn't, s it wasn't silver because everything else was gold. And I used the Krylon Brilliant Gold and that was at Walmart for like $4.98. And I've used it on like so many projects as is, so if you guys check out, I did Christmas decor, I made a present of gold, old glass bottles I recycled and covered in glitter for a Christmas present for my cousin. So um, I'll put the link below to that. And the other thing you'll need, so something to cut those pieces of wood with if you're going to, you know, do it yourself. Otherwise, I, cut, I got my own and um, you're going to need a drill. Um, you're going to need a drill bit for the screws to screw it in. You're going to need a, so that's a bit, and you're going to need a drill bit. A long bit that has kind of like a square end right here. And to use that with a hammer to really get in there and staple the rest of those staples in. Because if they're like super long like the ones we have then um, they're not going to go in all the way when you go to staple it into the frame. So you may have to uh, hammer it down in and make sure that it's flat and secure. Um, the other things that you're going to need to obviously cut the hardware cloth is some pliers to bend it. You can also use a board and cheat and make everything bend along that board. And you're also going to need some wire clippers. Um, for painting, I forgot to include paintbrushes. Um, the sponge worked out really well. Um, now when I went to go do these um, doorknobs, the, do the doorknobs on my mom's frame have really, really small um, ends on the inside. And mine on my frame had really, really wide um, because they're wood and they were like massive squares and because they were so close because it's such a tight spot right here that um, I end up having to um, use a glue gun which you can get at the you can get the glue at the dollar store a pack of 16 that fit this size for a buck and you can get the glue gun for like four or five dollars I think it was like three or four dollars actually at Walmart so uh, what I did was I put a little bit on right after um, twisting it on and then the rest of the way it had the glue and the screw so now it's nice and secure it's not going to be moving anymore and so now I have some sample jewelry so you guys can see what it's going to look like when you guys make your own. So it's a little tricky but you can actually hang your sunglasses on there too so depending on how much depth you put in there because um, the wire is still fairly close to the backboard, um, so unless you get like a super deep frame, you're still going to be somewhat tight, but you can still get your sunglasses in there. Of course, if they're, you know, curving behind the ear, it's going to take a little work, but you can still hang all your necklaces from the tops and the sides, you know, depending on length, your bracelets and your rings on the bottom, like so. And there you go. There's all your jewelry display. So here is the vintage one, which of course is for my mommy because it's so classy. And this is mine, which is a complete redo. So I painted the background a galaxy, which you guys will see. And I give you guys some tips on how to do that. And then you can actually, what I've done is I've had the color match the frame. So it's almost like the frame is an extension of the background picture. And then I used a cloth or actually an old sock I turned into like a rag and I took silver and I dusted along these carved details so they stand out so it's it's futuristic it's classy and it's artsy all at the same time so um I hope that you guys can enjoy this project and if you guys come up with something yourself or different tricks or you guys want to show pictures or video replies on your own projects that are similar I would love to hear from you guys um the next couple of projects are already on Handy Mandy TV on the exclusive content. That's a link below. And I'm still working out the details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the schedule for projects that are upcoming on the exclusive content. 
And then, as I have been for this project, I'm posting pictures to Facebook and to Google Plus so that you guys can see what I'm coming up with as I'm getting it together so that you guys can follow along and make comments or, you know, requests for a future episode, like something like an offshoot or anything, or any questions, you know, anything that comes to mind. I just want you guys to feel that you guys can participate and this is my kind of journal, as it were. I get to do these fun projects that, you know, you guys get inspired by, like myself, from things that you see or you hear about and you're like, oh man, I really, really would like to do something like that. The, you know, doing a channel like this gives me the opportunity to do that, so I hope that you guys can inspire to maybe do your own kind of YouTube journal. So, until next time.